Thank you very much, Vice President. Commissioner Reinders. Thank you. Uh, bonjour à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. To start with, uh, today is an important day for protecting the rule of law in the European Union. The publication of this first annual report is a turning point because this is the first time that we'll be presenting a mapping of the situation of the rule of law in each of the member states. The information in this mapping exercise uh, is not new. It's all public knowledge uh, available to the public, uh, but it is a genuine and useful overview of the situation of the rule of law throughout the EU. And this represents an important source of information and will prove handy for future discussions, not just at a European level, but nationally and locally. This report will allow us uh, to start a new phase in protecting and promoting the rule of law, a culture, a mindset of the rule of law in the European Union. I've always defended the case that the rule of law should be considered uh, fully, completely and continuously. This is an ambition that I had defended in my previous responsibilities. I've also been one who thought that you cannot just focus on certain member states, but we need uh, to have a serious look at all member states uh, on an equal footing using a common methodology that is objective. If the rule of law is not respected in the Union, how can we possibly be credible when we start to talk about our values with candidate countries or our international partners. If the rule of law is in danger, it is the entire uh, edifice of the community that uh, is at risk. Uh, in fact, it involves the Union in its entirety. What is happening in one member state has a real impact on all other member states, and we can see this increasingly when it comes to a certain number of the specific cases. With this report, we want to tackle the problems at a very early stage, uh, which is why this is a new tool which will be added to the other ways and means we already have uh, to ensure the rule of law. We are establishing a comprehensive European rule of law mechanism. The heart of this new mechanism is the Commission's rule of law report adopted by the College today. Our report covers both positive and negative developments in the Union, including a country-specific assessment of all 27 member states. I would like to stress that this report makes a clear difference between pectoral concerns that we may have in some member states and the systemic issues. The European Rule of Law Mechanism, with the Rule of Law Report, at its centre will serve to deepen dialogue and joint awareness of the rule of law throughout the European Union. The mechanism is a yearly process during which we aim to prevent problems from emerging or deepening by having open debates and by exchanging best practices. To set up the mechanism, in January, I wrote to all the EU ministers to establish a network of national rule of law contact points in every member state. This was instrumental not only as a constant channel of communication with member states, but also to discuss the methodology of our report. On this basis, all 27 member states provided written input. We also carry out a targeted stakeholder consultation where over 200 stakeholders provided written input. These include EU agencies, national and European civil society organizations, and professional associations. And we conduct more than 300 virtual country visits. During these visits, we discussed rule of law developments with member states' national authorities with judicial and independent authorities, and again, with relevant stakeholders such as journalist associations. Last but not least, every member state had the opportunity to check its draft country chapters 
for factual accuracy. All member states have been closely involved, have actively participated in the process. They were all treated equally. We applied the same methodology to all and constantly ensure consistency. We made sure that this process was robust, transparent, and as inclusive as possible. But let me also be clear that this report represents the Commission's own assessment. This takes me to the report itself. I repeat that we look at four key areas, the independence, quality, and efficiency of justice systems, the anti-corruption framework, media pluralism and media freedom, and order institutional checks and balances. On the independence, quality, and efficiency of justice system, we appreciate that a number, in a number of member states, efforts are underway to strengthen judicial independence and reduce the influence of the executive or legislative power over the judiciary. For instance, the setting up of strengthening or strengthening of independent national councils for the judiciary is a good example of how some member states have been making concrete efforts. But it is also true that judicial independence remains an issue of concern in certain member states. For example, we identified issues related to the capacity of councils for the judiciary to exercise their functions. We have also more structural concerns over an increasing influence of the executive and legislative branch over the functioning of the justice systems, including constitutional courts and supreme courts. In terms of quality of justice, the current pandemic has highlighted the importance of uh, digitalizing justice systems. Many initiatives are ongoing in member states to deliver real improvement for the users of justice systems. Some justice systems are already equipped with the technology to operate remotely, to carry on communicating with lawyers and other court, court users. These are good practices to share. We appreciate that several member states have adopted comprehensive new anti-corruption strategies or revised existing ones. What will, however, be key is that their strategies are effectively implemented and monitored to ensure that progress is made on the ground. In some member states, measures have been introduced to strengthen institutional capacity to fight corruption and to reduce obstacles to effective prosecution. But it is also true that our monitoring shows concerns in several member states about the effectiveness of the investigation, prosecution, and adjudication of corruption cases. This includes concerns that high-level corruption cases are not systematically pursued. About media pluralism and media freedom, first thing first, the independence and competence of media authorities is enshrined in law in every single member state. That being said, there are red flags in some member states. With regard to the political influence on the media, a lack of transparency when it comes to who owns media, a lack of pluralism in the media landscape, and risk to journalists and other media actors when doing their work. The fourth and final area of our report are institutional issues linked to checks and balances. On the positive side, there is a healthy debate on strengthening legal and constitutional safeguard in some member states. In a number of member states, reform processes are underway. In particular, they concern the opening up of new channels for citizens to challenge the exercise of executive and legislative, legislative power. The advice of international expert bodies, such as the Venice Commission, can support today's processes. The COVID-19 pandemic also provided some good examples of well-functioning checks and balances. Parliamentary scrutiny helped frame emergency response. The measures take were often reviewed by the courts. However, we also identified a number of rule of law related concerns in this area. In a few member states, we see 
repeated recourse to expedited legislation in Parliament or emergency ordinance uh, from the government. Moreover, in some member states, civil society lacks an enabling framework, faces a diminishing space to operate, legislation that limits access to fine funding or smear campaign, to name but a few examples. Where do we go from here? The comprehensive European rule of law mechanism is more than the report itself. What we want to achieve through this report is a true dialogue at EU and at national level with the European Parliament, the Council, national parliaments, as well as European and national stakeholders. This dialogue is a key of the mechanism. We want to promote a rule of law culture across the European Union. As you may know, the German presidency intends to have a rule of law dialogue in the Council based on our report. There will be two discussions in the General Affairs Council, a horizontal discussion covering general rule of law developments in October and country-specific discussions addressing key developments in specific member states in November, five member states. We will also be presenting the report to the European Parliament, which must be fully involved in this work, and we also need to ensure that progress is made in the discussions at national level. And I'd like to invite national parliaments, stakeholders and civil society to discuss the conclusions of the report. To support the process, we are planning on acting at national level, going to a number of national parliaments in person or being present uh, via, via video, depending on how the crisis is going, to discuss the conclusions of the report there. I think that the rule of law mechanism, I would say, doesn't end with the publication of the report today. Everyone, politicians, academics, experts, CSOs, journalists, and all EU citizens have to play a role. It's uh, the job of all of us to breathe life into this mechanism so that it becomes a real cornerstone of the protection of uh, our democracies. And I'd like to end by thanking all those in the Commission services and in the Secretariat who worked very hard um, to ensure that um, we've been able to put this into place. And we will be 